Known in early USAG as someone who helped found the original Olympic tours, Steve is very historical in women's gymnastics. Steve has fought hard for his gymnasts, physically, financially, and emotionally. But in Little Girls in Pretty Boxes, allegations of his coaching methods left people questioning if he should be investigated. For years, Steve Nuno has been admired by the community for his ability to get along well with Caroli and the U.S. Gymnastics Federation by keeping a low profile and saying the right things. Joanne once quoted, Steve Nuno can swagger around the gym, clapping other coaches on the back, smiling for cameras by showing off Shannon Miller. Nuno worked for Caroli in 1983 at Caroli's gym in Houston, shortly after the Carolis had defected from Romania. Steve Nuno stated in the 30 for 30 Heavy Metals podcast that because of Caroli's style and lack of business understanding, he left the gym and parted ways after they could no longer pay for his services. Nuno stated in 1992 that his style of coaching is like Caroli's, but he doesn't think he is as demanding with his students as Caroli is. Nuno yells but calls his coaching philosophy firm but fair. Nuno stated he learned two things when he coached under the Carolis for under a year. That was how to communicate with gymnasts and how to push them. He states that Bella pushed them too hard, though people say that Nuno is the American Caroli. Some believe that it was his goal to replicate Caroli. It wasn't until the 1992 trials that Nuno finally stepped out of Caroli's shadow talking candidly with reporters about Shannon's victory over Zemeskel and that Crowley should lift his glass to him. Crowley barely lifted to shake Nuno's hand. Crowley and Nuno had a rivalry throughout the 1990s. Once, when Crowley complained that Zemeskel should have gotten first ranking at the 92 Olympic trials, Nuno exploded. I'll be damned if somebody is going to take this away from me and Shannon. Nuno stated in 1992, Bella and I have never had a problem, and we won't have a problem in Barcelona. Nuno, he referred to Bella and him being selected as assistant Olympic coaches. Nuno and Caroli also had a history of trying to stake out their gymnasts. Carrie Strug and Jenny Thompson are just a few examples. They battled to take one another's gymnasts by bribery and to feed into the whole you are injured because of this place. Your self-esteem is low because of this place. You're broken because of your last coach. Mochiano states, I didn't know Shannon Miller well at the time. She was 19 and I was 14. She had years of experience under her belt and she had been my main competition at nationals. The media immediately ran with this rivalry angle that would continue to put us against each other for years to come. Miller and Nuno both resided in the same state and same town, yet they never met until meeting at gymnastics clinic in Moscow in 1986. Miller, who was nine at the time, cried a lot and was frustrated because she couldn't get the skills right. She was taking gymnastics at a recreational type program in Edmond, Oklahoma. Nuno was coaching at another gym in that town at the time. About two weeks after the clinic ended, Miller and her parents showed up at Nuna's doorstep and never left. Jack Rockwell, a trainer from the 1990s, stated that his explosive temper and drive to success caused Shannon to deny food and free time with friends to keep up with school and gymnastics. She absorbed the unending criticism with no complaint, constantly telling Shannon, if it's not a 10, it isn't perfect. On her 16th birthday, after eating a piece of pizza, Nuno punished her by running an extra mile on the treadmill the next day. He only complimented her once at the 1992 Olympics, Shannon claims, in the 1990s. In a 1993 article, people had suggested that Miller looked weak or thin and that Nuno is somehow at fault. It's not like gymnasts are kept in a glass bottle, Nuno states. They train with the team, they have a good relationship with the kids and the adults. Shannon lives at home. She goes to school, public school. She is a straight-A student. She eats better than you and me, and she hangs out in the gym. Yes, she grew up in the gym and is a little naive. 
It's true. She doesn't know anything about someone coming up to her and selling drugs on the street. But is that such a bad thing not to know? They respect their bodies. They eat right foods, and they take care of themselves, Miller said in a 1993 article that she would never consider going to train at another gym. In a 1992 article, while at a gymnastics spectacular tour in Miami, Shannon said she has never starved. We do eat. No one is starving me. I am happy. I am normal, and I eat three meals a day. In this article, Miller, along with her coach Steve Nuno, and other Olympic gymnasts and coaches, are upset over the backlash that women's gymnastics received after the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, despite its bronze medal winning team performance. We don't have an Eastern Bloc mentality. If I starved my athletes, I'd be out of business. People believe that Shannon and others on the 1992 team lost their childhood and emphasized too much during the games. Shannon has not lost her childhood. Gymnastics and the games is a part of her childhood. In a 2016 article, it describes in detail the creation of the Olympic tours that have since deceased in the last Olympics, now with gymnasts being part of the Gold Over America Tour, hosted by Simone Biles. Steve Nuno came up with the idea of doing a gymnastics tour following the 1992 Olympics and set it all up from a phone booth in Barcelona. In a 2020 interview with FTA World Championships, Nuno discussed that in these Olympic tours, his gymnast Shannon would fall on events like the balance beam. He discounted her health as to why she got hurt, blaming this on overexhaustion with numerous performances in under a week. He did not address things that were stated in Little Girls in Pretty Boxes from poor eating and over-exercise that Shannon had faced. It was also stated that Nuno would neglect Shannon on tour when she would do poorly. In an old competition one year before the Olympics, up-and-coming star Mina Kim was at a meet, and during her fluff piece, it stated, Nuno sets her eyes on the 96 Olympics, promising her that she would be eligible. Unfortunately, her birth year will not qualify her for the appropriate age of 15. Up until 1981, gymnasts could be as young as 14. From 1981 through 1996, a gymnast simply had to turn 15 in the year of the Olympics to be eligible for the senior national team. The rule was changed after the 1996 Olympics so that athletes must turn 16 in the Olympic year. Furious that only one of his gymnasts could qualify, Nuno went on a rant and tried to bend the rules by saying that, if you were born in Korea, you are born a year old, contending that she would be an appropriate age since she was born in Korea. While Erica Stokes was with Nuno, she took five to seven Advils a day under his watch. We'd all have these huge bottles of pain relief medication, she said to Joanne Ryan. Nuno also helped add Erica Stokes' eating disorder by forcing her to lose 10 pounds after leaving the Carolis and joining him. Weigh-ins were a daily practice. Nuno once said, You can talk a kid into being healthy for as long as you need. Once the meat is over, then you can let her be hurt. Carrie Strug left Nuno after a short time there. Nuno claimed that she had poor self-esteem when she had arrived and left Carolis. Of course, she came from the same gym, you know. Everyone had self-esteem issues. He also blamed Carrie for having a failure-to-thrive-at-his-gym attitude, since she would go home every night crying to her parents, stating that she was never accepted by him. Peggy Lydic, an orthopedist, once gave Carrie a shot of cortisone for acute pain in the abdominal muscle stating to Carrie that she would not damage the muscle during her competition. By the end of the competition, she tore the muscle completely. When asked about this question by Joanne Ryan, Nuno threw up his hands. The doctors had given us clearance. Pace her, and we did. Carrie's parents were not in support of her competing at this meet. I could also make a whole chapter on Peggy Lydic, who is a destructive coach. She's no longer with USAG, now in another country, previously a coordinator. She's done some evil things to gymnasts, but since she isn't with USAG, I'm not going to discuss her in this. Claudia Miller, Shannon's mom, 
also recalled a memory where Steve would, at times, just lay it into Shannon during practice. When we get in the car, I'd say to her, what's his problem today? Shannon would reply to, well, mom, I was doing it all wrong, and he had to straighten me out. His yelling doesn't bother Shannon, unless he starts to get personal. Every once in a while, he will think he is not trying hard enough, and tell her that, she is not an elite, and kick her out of the gym. Many times, I have to come pick her up, though not many times this year, stated in 1992. She has been waiting for me outside of the gym or on the couch because she has already kicked herself out of the gym, and that hurts my feelings as a mom. Then Claudia states, just as you think you can't stand him, he will do something nice. After trials, Peggy Ledick assistant coach, and Steve had gotten Shannon this golden necklace made with the five Olympic rings. Shannon was so excited, and now the only time she doesn't wear it is when she is in the gym. In the Out of Balance article, Shannon Miller was interviewed. Two-time Olympic champion Shannon Miller said it's inaccurate to portray gymnasts as unwilling victims of star-struck parents and abusive coaches. It's a mistake to think those girls aren't choosing to do what they want to do, Miller said. I don't think people give girls enough credit for knowing their own bodies. From 1983 to 1985, Nuno served as an assistant coach with Oklahoma University. Following Shannon's career ending, Nuno began to disappear in the elite spotlight. Nuno continued his gymnastic coaching career at Oklahoma University as the main coach for six years. In a 2006 article, it states that Nuno, 48, left the program in good hands, stepping down to spend more time with his family. His resignation came a little more than four months after two Oklahoma programs had violated NCAA rules. Among one of the programs, women's gymnastics, had violated the rules by allowing too many mandatory practices. This resulted in the university freezing Nuno's salary for one year and imposing a one-week suspension from gymnastic team activities. Nuno stated those recent violations had nothing to do with his decision to resign. He left OU in 2006 and moved to Tampa in 2011 at the age of 58 to help care for his mother, whose name was Emily. From then on, Nuno helped design the Bob Seeger YMCA Gymnastics Center in North Tampa, then ran its program for two years. He purchased four gyms in Florida, Lakeland, Daytona, West Palm Beach, and Northport. Years after his mother's passing, he was contacted by Emily Gaskins asking to be her coach. In a 2016 article, it stated, Gaskins, 16, is one of the youngest members on the U.S. National Gymnastics team. A year ago, she was injured, scared, and going downhill. She wanted a new coach and heard of a guy in Tampa named Steve Nuno, who was famous in the gymnastic community and the Olympic circle. He had been out of that level of coaching for years, but Gaskins, excitedly, phoned Nuno's West Palm Beach gym to see if he was interested. She said she was an elite gymnast, Nuno replied to her call. Sure you are. I thought she was a cheerleader or something. But Gaskins came to the gym, and that was that. They worked six days a week, grueling three-hour sessions, often two sessions a day. Nuno hadn't coached an elite gymnast in 15 years before he took on Gaskins. In the 2016 article, Nuno stated, Emily was all beaten up when she came to me. Her ankles were trashed, and she was mentally trashed. In the same article, Gaskin stated, He keeps the love of gymnastics inside of me. He makes me feel very comfortable, very confident, and he believes in me. Gaskins, who is homeschooled, will attend Alabama in a shot to make the Olympic team, which will likely feature defending Olympic all-around champion Gabby Douglas and three-time world all-around champion Simone Biles. We're on the bump, you know states. Think I enjoy that? I don't like Gaskins placing 12th overall in the last meet. I hate 12th. Let's get that straight. Gaskins doesn't like 12th either. In the 2016 article on Gaskins, Shannon Miller stated, 
Nuno was a larger-than-life personality that taught me so much more than just gymnastic skills. He taught me many of the life lessons that I still use today. Steve Nuno may be a neglectful, toxic coach back in the day, but I question at times if he has learned his lesson. His peak times were back in the 1990s, which was over 20 years ago. Since then, he has seen the culture change, and I'm not saying that he has improved, but based on Shannon's One More Time documentary, I didn't see who was physically or verbally abusive, at least on camera.